I'm nothing in comparison to the music. The Detroit sound is um, the hardest sound out there, hands down, because you, you're dealing with a, a city that's full of people that are working, people that are struggling. You know, when it comes to the music, it's serious. Everybody here takes the music seriously. And Detroit as a city has got such a, a long musical history, jazz and blues. Uh, and gospel music, uh, it's, that's amazing right there. But then, yeah, yeah, there's Motown. And when you look at something like Motown, a label that really changed the course of the music industry, I mean, the music world was never the same after Motown. Uh, I think that you've got, a, you've got some really strong roots you get to, to grow from. And this record is really where the word techno came from, where the word techno became widespread because of this record right here. Uh, Richie Houghton, you know, this guy uh, was from just across the, the river here. He had a huge impact on what was happening within Detroit, what happened within the scene. Techno, this is where, this is where it came from. It came from Detroit. So it's, I mean, it's an underground sound. It's beating, it's, it's working hard and definitely, definitely hitting harder than anything else you've ever heard. In the 80s, you had crack. A lot of things to really, you know, you know, you know put people down spiritually. You know, this was about a future that was, was exciting, and it was an escape from whatever negativity was going on. This gear, this is what transformed everything. This gave people the ability to get out of their situation and, and, and get to that other future, that other reality. The whole thing of what underground resistance is, I mean, underground resistance has gone on for, for centuries, you know, thousands of years. There's been underground resistance, you know, across the globe. And this particular label and uh, the guys involved in starting it up, Jeff Mills and Mike Banks, had both experienced some stuff which really put them in a position of having to deal with their own brand of resistance. I'm Mad Mike, 38 from UR. Founder, co-founder, me and Jeff Mills. I learned very early that fame and fortune was fleeting and they only lasted as long as you had enough sense to keep it. And for many people, that wasn't long. I noticed that a lot of the people we had put out had stepped in front of their music in their effort to become famous. And when I saw how many of the uh, black artists had became famous and got material shit and then fed it up, and lost it all. What we look like really shouldn't make a big of a difference. Our thing was really, I'm nothing in comparison to the music. How can my face be more important than uh, sound and the gift that sound brings to people? You know, the first track on your album was called um, hey, Your Time Is Up. Um, by, uh, with this woman named Yolanda on it, uh, doing vocals and, uh, and Mike and Jeff Mills uh, together had produced the track, and, uh, and it was house, it was house music. Uh, what happens is later on, uh, a more hardcore sound started to come out of UR. Uh, then you have the whole uh, nation to nation, world to world albums, later Galaxy to Galaxy, which has grown into universe to universe, the whole uh, high-tech jazz sound. People always come by and ask, where's the UR studios? Well, there is no UR studio. What happens is each producer has their own studio. Everybody's responsible for really digging in and coming up with a sound that, that really defines what it is they're doing. Uh, you got a guy like Andre Holland, uh, you got Billy Bob, but what happens is on top of that, you've got the bands. You've got Interstellar Fugitives, you've got folks who have uh, releases out proper, folks like Mark Flash, Nomadico, DJ Scourge. I never started listening to techno until probably the mid-90s. A lot of that music wasn't getting played on the radio, so you really had to go out to the clubs or the parties to really hear it. Um, as I started asking around about the names, this, this UR label kept coming up. Uh, UR is really something that people come to 
when they've got something they're trying to express, they recognize that UR is, is, a, is a really strong vehicle for, for that. I got hooked up with Underground Resistance through Deshaun Jones. He's the saxophone player, and me and him are the newest additions to Underground Resistance. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, to be honest, because uh, Cornelius came to me and said, you know, well, we pick up different saxophonists as we go along, and I'm thinking it's just a local band that does dates, but I had no idea that it was at this magnitude. 365 days ago, I never liked techno. I wasn't into it. I didn't understand why people enjoyed it so much, but I saw how energetic people were when, when, we heard, when they heard the music that we were performing, and I got to meet people, and they just described how techno has changed their lives. It was, it was life-changing for me. Uh, Mark Flash, you are 078, <laughs> uh, DJ producer for Underground Resistance. I'm a Nomadico, aka DJ Dex, you are 061. I'm also a producer and tour DJ for Underground Resistance. I've been involved with Underground Resistance for actually, I would say, actually seven years now. My whole original intention of like working with these guys was because I, I kind of came from a similar background. Uh, you know, just like working class, but still interested in art and music and, and like basically expanding my horizons beyond, beyond like my neighborhood, which is what, when I came here, I found that these guys were really all about. Most kids uh, in my neighborhood never even get a chance to get out. They grow there. I've seen the, my friends that I grew up with, they're still there, still, you know, some of their parents not even, haven't even left the neighborhood, don't even, like the mall, like, let's say a mall's in a different city. They haven't even been to the mall in another city. They shop in the same neighborhood, spend their money in the, in the neighborhood, which is good, but, you know, you know, broaden your horizons, you know, see the world. Let me see. I could actually, let me throw, let me throw this on real quick. If there were no problems, you know, what type of music would have came out of the city? You know what I mean? If everything was, you know, suburban, you know, this, uh, if, this, if this wasn't the place where that riots happened, it just wasn't a place where all those different civil rights issues, issues went down. The history of UR is, is important in that, you know, you need to understand that the history revolves around people who are fighting against stuff and trying to make things better and trying to find their voice. And so, that's what this is about for me. This is about new dreams and being able to have new dreams and being able to go there and being able to say, look, you can have these dreams and you know what, we're gonna try to make those dreams real. I think the real truth behind this music is we actually live this music. You know, this isn't a trivial thing. This is, this is my life. This is John's life. And I depend on this. I depend on this to, to get me to where I need to be. So the music has a whole nother meaning because it's my life. And that's what Mike Banks has, has done for, for John and for myself. Because truthfully, just to call it for what it is, we're the future of this music. You know, we're just, we're like ambassadors, I guess, to the rest of the world of what it means to make this music and really make it, really make it happen. I know for me as a musician. When I create something or play in front of people, the people give the energy. I can play better than I can normally. So truly, you have to ask the question, is it you playing the music or are you getting played?